picture is seen in primary sclerosing cholangitis okay so this is regarding primary sclerosing cholangitis so now we are going to start another important topic that is bile duct injury the next topic is bile duct injury most common cause of bile duct injury is cholecystectomy and whether it is more common in laparoscopic cholecystectomy or open cholecystectomy so lap cholecystectomy causes more bile duct injury as compared to open cholecystectomy okay what is the percentage in lap cholecystectomy it is 0.3 to 0.8 percent in open cholecystectomy it is 0.1 to 0.2 percent okay other causes can be uh, in gastrectomy damage to the distal bile duct or in any other surgery the, of gallbladder it, it can lead to a radical cholecystectomy it can lead to bile duct injuries also but the most common cause is cholecystectomy most commonly a laparoscopic cholecystectomy suppose what happens is uh, suppose this is liver now this is gallbladder now there is a cystic duct and this is a common bile duct here while doing a cholecystectomy there is a sometimes we can mistake by mistake damage this particular area okay that is a cystic duct cbt junction sometimes uh, there is a possibility that the cystic duct can be misidentified the cbt can be misidentified as cystic duct and there is division of the cbt also okay so the injuries to the bile duct can be of various types but most common type or you can say that most commonly the injury is of this particular area or the cystic duct cbt junction okay uh, or we can say as in us in mcq that proximal part of bile duct is more commonly injured okay so which portion of the bile duct is more commonly injured it is the proximal part or the part that is associated with the gallbladder is more frequently injured as compared to the distal part okay and generally the injury occurs while dissecting calot triangle okay and why the injury occurs because of misidentification of the structures injury occurs because of misidentification of the structures now there is a very important classification for uh, the biliary injury the classification is strasburg classification of biliary injury and bismuth classification for biliary stricture initially there will be injury and gradually there will be ischemia of the bile duct which leads to a biliary stricture and to combine them for a better understanding a classification has been made that is known as strasburg bismuth or bismuth strasburg classification okay in this classification strasburg classification is for the biliary injury one and bismuth is for the biliary stricture okay now what is this bismuth strasburg classification this is a very nice diagram to explain this a to d is of bismuth uh, is of strasburg classification and e1 to e5 is of bismuth classification okay so 
Strasberg Bismuth classification is from A to E, okay, in which E is for stricture and uh, type A injury is basically a cystic duct stump leak or leak from subvesical duct of Lushka, okay. Type B is ligation of the aberrant right sectoral duct. Type C is transaction of the aberrant right sectoral duct leading to a bile leak. And type D is lateral injury to the common hepatic duct. This is transfer classification. And when a stricture forms, this E1 is basically a high is uh, biliary structure with a stump size of more than 2 cm. This is how we calculate a stump size from the hilum and at the level of structure, how much is the size? This is this will be the stump size. If the stump size is more than 2 cm, this will be E1. If it is less than 2 cm, it is E2. And when there is hilar structure, structure at the level of hilum, but the confluence is intact, that is both right and left duct are joining. Then it is type 3 or E3 and when both right and left duct are not joining together due to the damaged confluence it is type 4 and when there is a stricture which is involving the right sectoral duct, stricture involving the right sectoral duct with or without involvement of the common hepatic duct then it is E5. Okay, so a lot of questions are being asked on this classification and this table is very important. Another important point is out of all these which is the most common. Okay, so this type A is the most common. Out of which cystic duct stump leak is the most common one. Okay, and now next thing is how to manage this uh, biliary injury okay so initially suppose like if there is a biliary injury after a cholecystectomy a patient is uh, presenting a patient is admitted with us and now we have put a drain and there is uh, bile coming from the drain uh, coming around 50 ml per day we are suspecting a biliary injury now how to manage this patient and uh, for management portion, we will have to do all these steps one by one. First is to control the infection. For controlling infection, we will have to start injectable antibiotics. Now we have started antibiotics and now the next step is to get the ultrasound done or the imaging done, CT done and we will see there is the collection. Now the next step is to drain the collection. Okay. And we can put a pigtail which is either ultrasound guided or CT guided percutaneous either aspiration or a drain placement. Suppose we have placed a drain and now there is bile coming in the drain around 100 ml per day is coming and it is not reducing. Okay, now what we are supposed to do, we are supposed to do a cholangiogram to see whether there is any, uh, like from where the bile is coming or where is the injury of the biliary system. For that cholangiogram, we can go ahead with MRCP. With MRCP, we will be able to delineate the biliary tract, whether there is uh, continuity of the bile duct is maintained or the bile duct is transacted completely or there is a suspected lateral injury with a collection here this we can uh, delineate with MRCP and then we will go with the definitive treatment the definitive treatment is ERCP and stenting which is generally done in patients with uh, a cystic duct stump blowout if it is not resolving or with lateral injury of CHD that is in A and D Okay, we can go for ERCP and stenting. Also, in patients with uh, you can say C type, also, if there is uh, generally this portion will structure later on, here uh, ERCP will not help much, and in type B, also, ERCP is not going to help. 
ओके तो जनरली ईआरसीपी इज फॉर टाइप ए एंड टाइप डी मेजोरिटी ऑफ द सिस्टिक डक्ट स्टम्पल आउट दे हील ऑन देयर ओन विद द कंजर्वेटिव मैनेजमेंट सो ईआरसीपी स्टेंटिंग इज जनरली नॉट रिक्वायर्ड तो मोस्ट कॉमनली ईआरसीपी स्टेंटिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर टाइप डी काइंड ऑफ इंजरीज ओके एंड अदरवाइज इफ देयर इज बिलियर इज स्ट्रिक्चर any of these even to e5 for that we'll have to go ahead with a ru and y hepatico jejunostomy arcp and biliary stricture dilatation can also be attempted but the treatment of choice will be a ru and y hepatico jejunostomy okay so this is regarding the treatment of the biliary stricture now regarding the most commonly what kind of questions are being asked on the topic of biliary injury okay question number 1 now there is a patient who underwent patient who underwent cholecystectomy it was a difficult cholecystectomy and drain was placed difficult cholecystectomy and drain was placed okay post operatively there is a drain output of 500 ml on day 1 okay what is the treatment so the treatment is go for mrcp see the injury if uh, suppose if there is a lateral injury we can go for ercp and stenting and if there is undrained collections then drain those collections also okay if uh, on e e mmrcp there is a complete transaction not a lateral injury but a complete transaction of the bile duct so in that case uh, ercp stenting will not help much so in that case if we are detecting it on day 1 or day 1 or day 2 then we should go ahead with a ru and y hepatico jejunostomy sometime in the question uh, they will give another option that we will put a drain and refer patient to a to an expert hepatobiliary center in the question they can ask as what should be the ideal next step next step is to put a drain and refer patient to an expert hepatobiliary center because in injury patient a ru and y hepatico jejunostomy is best done with a with an expert hepatobiliary surgeon only okay so this is generally uh, done if there is a uh, very high output like 500 ml or 1 liter kind of out output which is showing that uh, there is injury of the common hepatic duct now there is another uh, question suppose there is 50 ml bile in the drain okay then we will observe the patient next step is observe on observing suppose if it is 50 ml it is increasing to 100 ml then we'll go next step is go for mrcp if on mrcp there is presence of cbd stone lateral injury then we should go for ercp and stenting and wait okay suppose if while observing it decreases from 50 ml to 25 ml 
and then to 10 ml then the next step should be to wait and watch as it will improve on its own now there is another question suppose initially there was 50 ml drain on output and after one week drain output was nil then we can remove the drain then post operate uh, then suppose after two to three months patient started developing recurrent episodes of cholangitis patient develops recurrent cholangitis okay what will be the most likely cause the most likely cause will be biliary stricture how to investigate the investigation will be mrcp and on mrcp suppose you are getting type 3 biliary stricture or this type 3 biliary stricture is actually they are talking about you have to see the language type 3 biliary stricture that is mainly e3 type of a biliary stricture okay so the treatment of choice will be for any biliary structure, the treatment of choice is RU and Y hepaticojejunostomy or HJ, you can say. And uh, what is the rule limb or the ideal rule limb length? I have already told you for hepaticojejunostomy, we generally take 40 to 50 centimeter of a rule limb. Why we take 40 to 50 centimeter rule limb? To uh, decrease reflux cholangitis. Okay, now this bismuth Strasbourg classification is very important. I'll revise. I'll repeat this classification again for you to revise. And uh, most common type is type A. That is generally a cystic duct stump blowout. Sometimes leak from subvesical duct of Lushka. Okay, this is most common. Then B is ligation. B is bandia. So you can say. Mnemonic. So, uh, basically, aberrant right sectoral duct, which was entering into the uh, common bile duct, was mistaken as cystic duct and usko ban diya. So, this is uh, basically ligation of the aberrant right sectoral duct. Then, transected or cut kar diya. So, this is for a type C kind of uh, uh, bile duct injury. Aberrant right sectoral bile duct ko cut kaya, that is type C kind of injury. And type D is lateral common hepatic duct injury or a complete transaction of a common hepatic duct. That is type D. Then the next is a biliary stricture. Type E1 is for more, the stump size is more than 2 cm. E2, it is less than 2 cm. E3, when the confluence is well, confluence is formed. Okay, there is a higher structure, but the confluence is 